In chapter 9, question 14, they're asking you to calculate the molarity, that's a keyword, of each of the following. So that keyword molarity should suggest a formula to you, namely that the molarity, that's this capital M, it equals the moles of solute over the liter of solution. Now remember, moles of solute, a mole, is an, a number of molecules. This is telling you how many molecules you have per liter um, in the units of moles. So we're going to take this and oops, take this and we are going to use that to find the molarity for each of these solutions. Okay. Now, it could be straightforward. In the case of the first one, they tell us that we have two moles of glucose and four liters of a solution. So we can plug the two in, the four in, and we get 0 0.5 molar glucose solution. Now, that capital M is indeed molarity. Molarity, though, is a noun. And here, that capital M is rather being used as an adjective to describe the 0 0.5. So you pronounce it differently, and you say 0 0.5 molar rather than 0 0.5 molarity. You say 0 0.5 molar. Okay, so that was really straightforward. For B, though, they do give us the liters of solution, so we can plug that two in, but they give us four grams of potassium hydroxide, KOH. They don't give us moles. So they give us grams of KOH. We want moles of KOH. So we're going to have to do a conversion. Now, to do, to do any conversion, you need a conversion factor that relates the two units. How do grams of KOH relate to moles of KOH? Well, let's say we had one mole. How many grams would it weigh? We're going to use the periodic table. We have three elements here, potassium, oxygen, and hydrogen. We only have one potassium. There's no subscript written below that potassium there, so we've only got one of them. And if you look at the box on the periodic table that has potassium in it, the number below the K is a 39. That's how many grams each mole of potassium weighs. Because we only have one, we're just going to get 39 grams coming from the potassium in this molecule. Okay, next. The molecule only has one oxygen, if you had just one mole. So you'd have one, moles, one mole of oxygen. Look at the box on the periodic table. Underneath the oxygen, you'd see around 16. Because we only have one mole in the molecule, we're going to have a total of 16 grams coming from the oxygen. All right, last but not least, hydrogen. We only have one of these because there's no subscript there. So uh, each hydrogen, if you look at the box on the periodic table, there's a one below the hydrogen. Each hydrogen weighs one gram. Each mole of hydrogen weighs one gram. Because we only have one mole, we're just going to get one gram coming from the hydrogen. Now, we can take these numbers, and just so I have a little more space, I'm going to move it down. We can take these numbers and add them all up. And if we do that, 39 plus 16 plus 1, we get 56. That's how many grams there are in one mole of this compound. 56 grams. Okay, so now we can take the number they give us, so that's 4 grams of KOH. Every time you do a conversion, write a multiplication sign, a fraction bar, and the units you start with on top. Here that's grams of KOH. You want to put on the bottom so that it cancels out. And then we can fill this in using our conversion factor. So next to grams of KOH, we'll go 56 Going over the fraction bars, like going across the equal signs on top, we'll have one mole of KOH. Grams of KOH cancel. We are left with moles of KOH, which is beautiful, because that is what we wanted. So then you'd have 4 divided by 56. That is 0 0.07143, let's say, moles of potassium hydroxide, KOH. Well, if that's how many moles we have, we can plug it in for our moles here on the top of that top of that fraction. So 0 0.07143. Okay, so we'll take that number, 
0.07143 divided by 2, and I'm getting 0 0.036 molar potassium hydroxide solution. So you'd have 0 0.036 moles in every one liter in that solution. Okay, let's try, let's try C. So they say that we have uh, 5.85 grams of, so of sodium chloride, NaCl, in 400 milliliters of an NaCl solution. Now, neither of those things is moles, and neither of those things is liters. But we can do a couple conversions and get them into the units we want. So, whoa. So we've got 5.85 grams of sodium chloride. What we really want is moles of that solute, sodium chloride, the number we have less of, solute. And so uh, that's a conversion to get from one unit to another. And for every conversion, you need a conversion factor that relates the two units. How does grams of sodium chloride relate to moles of sodium chloride? Well, let's say we had one mole. How many grams would it weigh? We can think in terms of each element. We have sodium, we have chlorine. In one mole of this compound, there is just one mole of sodium. Look at the box in the periodic table. Underneath Na, you will see 23. That's how many grams one mole of each mole of sodium weighs. Because we only have one, we're going to have 23 grams coming from that sodium. How about chlorine? Chlorine, well, we only have one chlorine in this molecule because there's no subscript there, a little number written to the bottom right of chlorine. So we've only got one. Look at the box on the periodic table. It has chlorine. You'll see 35.5 there. So 35.5 times 1, that's 35.5 grams coming from chlorine. So all together, we're going to have 58.5 grams in each mole of this compound. So one mole of NaCl will weigh 58.5 grams. Okay, so then we can take the number they gave us, 5.85 grams of sodium chloride. Every time you do a conversion, write a multiplication sign, fraction bar, and the units that you started with. Oops, here that was grams of sodium chloride. You want that to go on the bottom so that it cancels out. Next to grams of sodium chloride, we'll go 58.5. Going over the fraction bars, like going across the equal sign, so on top we'll have one mole of NaCl. Grams of NaCl cancel, and we are left with moles of NaCl. Uh, let me actually do this. So moles of NaCl. So 5.85 times 1, enter, divided by 58.5, enter, and I'm getting 0 0.1 moles of NaCl. Oops. And so that is, that are moles of solute. 0 0.1. All right. The other number they gave us was 400 milliliters. Now, at the bottom of this fraction, we want liters. So, ultimately, we need to do that conversion. For every conversion, you need a conversion factor that relates to two units. How do milliliters relate to liters? Well, in every one liter, there are a thousand milliliters. So, you can take the number they give you. Here, that'll be 400. Every time you do a conversion, multiplication sign, fraction bar, the units you start with on top go on the bottom so they cancel out. And then we can fill this in with our conversion factor. Next to milliliters, we'll go a thousand. Going over the fraction bars like going across the equal sign on top, we'll have one liter. Milliliters cancel, and we are left with uh, liters, which is what we wanted. So 400 times 1, enter, divided by 1,000, enter, that's 0 0.4 liters. That will go on the bottom of our molarity equation, so 0 0.4. So then you plug that into a calculator, 
0 0.1 divided by 0 0.4, and you would get 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And moles per liter, that's molar uh, solution. And you usually put the solute after there. So you, you read that as 0 0.25 molar sodium chloride solution. That means that you have 0.25 moles of sodium chloride in every one liter of solution.